What is going on guys? Hank here from Sprues and Brews, and in this video we're going to be doing a full tutorial on how to paint up 135 scale US World War II paratroopers. So whether you're an experienced modeler looking to add a nice little figure to your collection, or maybe you're a fan of the Band of Brothers series and want to dabble with figure painting for the first time, you are in the right place. We're going to be using this fantastic Alpine Miniatures resin figure today. This is one of their 101st Airborne Officers. And if you're not familiar with Alpine stuff, they come in just a few parts and only require a bit of cleanup before getting started. Our trooper has all of his accessories and his right arm molded onto this one pouring block, and his M1 carbine and his right hand are on the other. Another great thing about this company is that they always provide two heads in each box. Here we've got one with just the camo netting over the helmet, and the other has the camo netting with some hessian tape woven in. We're going to go with the latter today because it provides a little extra character for us to work with. It's always a good idea to give your resin parts a quick bath in soapy water before you paint to help get that resin releasing agent off there. Trusty Snow White water bowl is not required. After a quick rinse off camera, we can dry off our parts and get to assembly. We can use our sprue snippers to carefully remove the individual parts from the pouring blocks. Any excess material left over can be easily removed with a sharp hobby knife. Our next step will be to attach all of our parts with a bit of super glue. Alpine sculpts in some nice guide marks to make sure that everything fits into place perfectly, which is super handy. Now if you've seen any of my other figure painting videos, I have these little DIY mounting blocks to handle the figures while I'm working. They're just some scrap wood and drywall screws, nothing fancy at all. We'll temporarily super glue our figure and our head onto two separate mounting posts for painting, and it's just about time to get started. The last thing we're going to do before painting is to add a strap for our guy's M1 carbine here. Straps are super easy to make with just thin strips of Tamiya masking tape. You can just cut a piece to size and stick it right into place. A bit of super glue can help secure the ends of the strap if necessary. With that complete, let's break out our airbrush for a quick primer coat before we move on to the brush painting. 
I like to prime my figures with flat black to give a nice surface to work on. If you don't have an airbrush, you can achieve this step with a rattle can of spray paint as well. Once everything is primed up, we'll switch gears to our wet palette. This great little palette is from the good folks over at Frontier Wargaming. We're going to start with our head first in this video. I'm going to split this into two parts so we have adequate time to cover everything, so be sure to check out part two for our uniform painting and weathering stages after this video is over. We'll start with a coat of Vallejo Medium Flesh Tone here to give our skin a little color and depth. I'm the first to admit that I'm not an expert figure painter by any means, but this simple method has helped me paint up some really great figures for award-winning dios and armor builds, so it'll definitely get the job done if you're primarily an armor builder like me and you don't want to spend a ton of time on figure work. For our eyes, I chose a really bold color here. This is ammo blue for figures, and we're going to carefully make two tiny lines in our eye sockets. At this scale, you can skip the whites of the eyes. They tend to stand out way too much and really give you that googly eye effect that we want to avoid. So we're just going to go with a little color here and the washes we do during the weathering stage will help us out in the end. Once the eye color is applied, we can go back to our base color and refine that almond eye shape. Once we're happy with our eye shape, we're going to grab some medium brown and draw in some eyebrows for our guy here. Next we're going to do a glaze of basic skin tone. This is going to look pretty wacky at first, but stick with me, trust the process, it's all going to work out in the end. We want to thin our paint down a little bit here with some water, and we're going to go over that medium flesh we just painted with our new lighter color. This is going to help make the skin a little less yellow and still let some of that color through for a nice dynamic skin tone and feel. We're going to grab our green gray after that, and we're going to paint up the jump straps on our trooper's helmet. Once that's complete, we're going to switch to US Olive Drab and paint up the main part of the helmet itself. Make sure to get the underside of the rim as well, especially if you've overpainted any of the skin tone. For our helmet straps, I like to use red leather. It stands out really great against all of our greens and drabs and khakis, and it works perfectly for this. We're going to very carefully paint those straps in along the front and back of the helmet. With that complete, we're going to paint up those camouflage strips that were woven into the helmet netting. You can really use any earth tones you like for this to add a little variety and interest to your figure. I chose a brown, a green, and a khaki as you see here.
With all those complete, we're going to hit our helmet with a little bit of dry brushing to help that netting stand out from all of the olive drab. I'm using the same green gray we used for the inside helmet straps. Just load up your brush with some paint and then wipe most of it off on a paper towel so that when we paint here, only the highest surfaces of the helmet collect the paint itself. And for our last step with the head here, we're going to accentuate all of our buckles. I like to do this with some white aluminum. This is a bit of an artistic choice to help make these details visible from a little ways away, and trust me, they're going to look great when everything is weathered up and a bit of matte varnish is applied. And that is going to finish up our head. So let's hop over to part two of this video to continue on with our uniform painting and finishing steps. See you there.